I'm definitely not allowed inside the house right now. Do you want to know how I got covered in all of this hair? Keep watching to find out. Howdy, and welcome to the Bar SC Ranch, where you will experience our journey of running a family business, caring for animals, and doing life together. Subscribe now and be inspired here at the Bar SC. Hey guys, so for the past week or two, when Maddie and I go out in the evening and ride our horses the way that we normally do year round, they've been getting way sweatier than they really should be. And that's because they've started growing in their winter coats, which means their coats are getting thicker in response to the daylight cycles. But at the same time, it's not actually that cold here just yet. And even if it is really cold here, we're working them pretty hard so they're building up a sweat. You know, if you were gonna go for a run, even in winter, you might take off a layer or two as you do it. These horses, they can't just pull the hair off when it suits them and put it back on. So instead, we do something called clipping and then blanketing as a, you know, kind of a mechanism for dealing with this where we can take all the hair off them, just like taking off the layers, and then add our own layers on in the form of blankets when they're needed so that we can keep our horses as comfortable as they can be, you know, whether they're working really hard or whether it's freezing and, you know, pouring down rain and they're out in pasture, we can use our own sorts of things like blankets um, and just controlling the environment for them, keeping them dry, keeping them warm, where they're not getting too warm because they're covered in so much hair. So today we're going to show you and talk a little bit more about what it looks like to clip a horse and what some of the different clips are, um, depending on the kind of work that your horse is doing. Uh, so keep watching, we're going to show you two different horses, uh, Dylan and Willie, and Willie <laughs> who are very similar horses but we're clipping a little bit differently and we're, we'll tell you how and show you what that looks like. All right guys, so now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the clip that we're gonna be doing on Dylan here. And when you're deciding on what kind of clip you're gonna do on you know, your horse or you know, horses in a program that you guys are working with or whatnot, you wanna take into account their workload, the horse themselves, so like their body condition, if they're a little bit thin, a little bit fat, um, how much they tend to sweat, where they specifically tend to sweat a little bit more, because each horse is different. Um, so if you have the luxury of having known that horse for a couple of years or seen them through, you know, a previous winter, you know a little bit more about them, about their habits, and you can take that into account. So I've had Dylan here for a gazillion years at this point, <laughs> and I, knew, I know how he winters. We actually haven't been clipping him over previous winters because he's pretty much gotten the winter off. And so if your horse isn't doing any work, um, and they're not just standing there, you know, sweating just because they happen to be warm for some reason, then you really, there's no reason to clip them. Um, horses actually do much better with their natural coat, keeping them warm, then you don't have to worry about blanketing them. Um, but because Dylan um, and Willie, who we're also clipping today, are in such heavy work and we're riding them every single day for at least an hour at a time and they're getting very, very sweaty as we do that, we're going to clip them so that they can be more comfortable in their work and so that we can more easily get sweat off them, get them dried, get them cleaned up before we put them back out in pasture and put their blankets back on them. Because even when Dylan and Willie have a full hair coat, we still do blanket them just to keep them dry. So giving us a clip where we're not going to overheat them, whether they're in work or whether they're blanketed, is going to help us out. So Grace drew me this really cool drawing of a very long version of Dylan. <laughs> it looks, he's very cute. And he's blue, which is Dylan and I's favorite color. Just kind of decided that for Mr. Dylan. I think he's okay with it. Otherwise, I'm going to show you the clip that we're looking to do on him, because I looked at the internet and there's a lot of different options out there if you wanted to do some research on different kinds of horse clips. There's, you know, blanket clips, there's hunter clips, there's trace clips, bib clips, all kinds of, some people just clip their horse into a different kind of animal and like draw designs. That's also super cool. But what we're going to do today is a combination of a lot of different ones because it's kind of something I've just decided this is going to work well for him. So we couldn't find a picture. So instead I'm going to draw the little areas that we're going to clip. So the first thing, um, if we're starting at his head and working down, I don't normally like to clip Dylan's head. It doesn't get super sweaty. He doesn't love clippers near his ears. It's just easier for all of us if we stay the heck away from his face. So we're going to start behind his head and work on his neck. 
and we're gonna clip just this underside portion of his neck just because that tends to be where they'll get a little bit more sweaty, especially if we're working in any kind of a collection. You know, there's a lot of friction going on in there. Um, and that's where he will sweat quite a bit, and that's going to allow some heat to escape up in this upper body region. As we get back to the rest of his body, we're going to find a line somewhere here on his shoulder where we're going to then clip his entire barrel. So his entire barrel would be like his shoulder area, his stomach area, and then up over his hip. The next line that we're gonna need to find is down here with his legs, where we're going to not clip his legs below his barrel. So we're gonna try and make, we're gonna try, don't get too excited about my abilities here, but we're gonna try and follow the line of the muscle here. That tends to look a little better, looks a little more natural if we can follow this line. And the same thing in the back, coming back over here near his stifles, is we're going to follow this line here and not clip below it. So we're clipping everything above this line, we're not clipping his legs. For horses that live out in pasture, um, and they're in the mud, in the water, you know, there's bushes all over the place growing everywhere, clipping their legs would be doing them a, really, a real disservice. Hey chicken. Just because if they're gonna get anything rubbed on them or mud caked on them or anything like that, now it's really, really close to their skin and it's gonna rub and cause irritations and cause funguses and cause issues like that. Whereas if we leave the hair coat, it gives them a little bit of a buffer there. It makes it a little easier for us just to scrape any mud and gunk off them rather than having their, you know, basically their skin exposed to these elements. Um, so that's what we're gonna be working with on Dylan. Some people do a really cool thing called a hunter clip where they leave basically like the shape of the saddle up top. And I think that's hilarious looking, but we're not gonna do that with Dylan here because I know my own skills. But otherwise, um, this is the clip that we're gonna be doing with Dylan and we're hoping it turns out all right this time around. So today, I'm gonna to be trimming Willie, and I'm gonna be giving him a trace clip. So basically, we're just gonna be clipping the parts of him that are gonna get the most sweaty as we're working. So we're gonna leave his head, and then we're gonna do a, we're gonna clip a strip along his neck, up by his shoulder, leaving his legs, through his, kind of the bottom of his belly, up over the hip, and then we're gonna do a little bit up right over the back of his hip. Okay, so we're gonna get started here with Dylan now, and I've got my two tools that I really need. Actually, there's a third tool, let me grab that. A brush. <laughs> and you'll know why in just a second here. We're not gonna need the brush for a few minutes because the first thing that I'm gonna be doing with Dylan is just laying out my lines of where my clip is going to go. So if I just start somewhere in his midsection, start clipping, I know me, and I'm sure you know you, I'm just gonna end up going like, like in some weird pattern, and I'm gonna clip something I didn't mean to clip. So the first step for clipping, to make sure that you've got clean lines and you know where you're clipping to, is always to set out your boundary lines of where you're gonna clip within, so that that way you don't accidentally go outside that, outside that line, and you have a nice clean line um, at the border of your clip. But our three tools here, the brush, is one for cleaning out my clippers if they start getting mucked up with hair, Two, for brushing any hair that might get stuck on him off so that it's not then getting stuck in my clippers simply because I'm trying to clip over a section that has hair glued to it as well. Um, and then my third little bit is my cool lube, which is good for my clippers. So not only does it cool the clipper blade down because as these run, they get very, very warm and you don't want to burn your horse, but they also lubricate the clipper blade so that they're not causing excessive friction and you're not damaging your clipper blade or your clippers while you're clipping. Um, and of course we have our clippers themselves. Um, you wanna choose a blade, and I mean, if you're, at, if you're clipping a horse at home, you probably have an idea of what kind of blade you use, but this one's called the T84, and that just means it's a little bit wider. Most clipper blades that you find don't have this little extra on the side of the blade, which makes it go a little bit faster. I'm sure it's not any really large appreciable amount, but when you have to go through the entire section of Dylan, it makes a big difference. So I like my T84s, they're a little bit wider, but I wouldn't clip him so closely so I wouldn't get such a fine, you know, short cut that I'm gonna cause like a sunburning issue or an issue where I've literally just basically shaved him with a razor. <laughs> but also if they're too long, you've not clipped any hair off your horse. So T84 is a good size. We also use clipper blades in a size called 10. That's what Maddie's gonna be using today. Um, so both of those are really great for what you're looking to do when you're clipping your horse. Um, otherwise, any pair of horse clippers, you wouldn't really want to use human clippers. They're just not quite up to the challenge. <laughs> Small sections, sure. Large sections, no. You'll, you'll really kill your human clippers. 
But otherwise, these are horse specific. They have two speeds. We're going to be using speed two today because we're going over a large section of his body. But for fine detailed work or anything that wasn't too drastic, you could use the first speed as well. But otherwise, we'll get started here. I've already sprayed a little bit of my cool lube onto my clippers, and now I'm ready to get started setting up my lines. So, the first line that I'm gonna work on is this one right here by his forearm, kind of into his shoulder here. And I'm gonna to wanna to try and follow as best I can, again, as best I can, <laughs> this muscle right here. You see this large muscle. If I clipped like arbitrarily through the middle of it, it would look really weird. So your goal is going to be to come right below it. And there's sort of a little shelf that's created by this muscle. So I'm gonna clip everything above this line and leave that as the border of his leg below. So I'm gonna do that now, keeping in mind that I'm trying to follow the grain of the hair. So I'm actually cutting against the grain of his coat as I cut, but knowing that the hair here kind of grows down and then it grows back. So I'm gonna have to sort of alter my angle a little bit in order to get the line that I want. Um, and again, some people do this for a living and they just like phew, 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 and they're done in 10 seconds and they charge you a hundred bucks and it's great because now you didn't have to do it. But I've always done it myself. I never really had a hundred bucks laying around. And it's kind of good quality time to spend with your horse. And you know what? It's a life skill. So bear with me while I attempt <laughs> to set up the line on Dylan's shoulder. Now that I've you know, made this big disclaimer, it's gonna be perfect. So just you wait. <laughs> There we go. And as I set up my line, I might have to go back a few times and kind of angle my clippers in a different way in order to hit a certain little bit of fur. And the best thing to keep in mind as you're clipping is that if you're getting into areas like back here in his elbow, you'll notice that I actually use my brush like a tool. You can use your hand as well. I'm just using my brush because I already have it in my hand as I'm cleaning my clipper blade, is to hold the skin taut and make sure that you're not gonna nick them because there are little gaps in these clippers. They're small gaps, so it shouldn't be that easy to nick them, but it is still possible. You know, your horses, especially as they get a little older, they have a little bit more, um, or less, I should say, elasticity in their skin. They get a little more wrinkly in certain areas. And you really need to make sure that you're not going to accidentally catch one of those folds of skin into the blades of your clipper. So by pulling this skin forward, it allowed me to get back behind there, kind of into his elbow crease, without being at risk of nicking him, which would be a very bad thing. Of course, he wouldn't want me clipping him if I was constantly making him bleed. Um, all these little spots you see here that kind of look like red spots are actually just the patterns in his coat. He's a flea-bitten gray, so he ends up being a very fun color when you clip him, because you get to see a little more of these. Like, he's got a lot of little red spots, but when you clip the majority of the hair off, they <laughs> really stand through. So I'm always excited every year that we clip him and every year that he sheds out over the summer to see how many new spots he's gained because they just change all the time. But otherwise, this is a great line for right here, for me, a great line for me. If you're looking at home going, oh my goodness, that line is not straight. It is straight, I swear. But also, you know, it's, it's all up to your own standards and what you're looking for. Everything always looks better like two days after you've clipped. <laughs> That's always my motto is, well, that looks a little funky. Let's wait two days, let's sleep on it. And as it kind of grows back in, it kind of blends a little bit. Um, gives you just a little bit of blending. But otherwise, we're gonna do our next line, which is gonna be, now we're gonna clip all of this under his neck, is gonna be clipped, so we don't need a line there. But I do need a line coming from up here on his shoulder and down his neck. But since he is eating right now, maybe let's move to the back side of him first, because it's not gonna be a good idea to clip your horse with their head down on the floor. <laughs> You're gonna have a hard time making a straight line. But otherwise, we'll do his back area right here, kind of up by his stifle. Let's pull my clippers a little closer. So we're gonna make a line here. It's the same concept as the front, where we've got this muscle forming, and this muscle right here, and it forms a nice line going straight back. So that's the line that we're going to attempt to clip 
with our clippers. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you learned a little bit today, not only about clipping our horses, but also about what we're gonna do soon into the winter, you know, in order to keep them the most comfortable they can be. You learned a little bit about a couple different forms of clipping. And hopefully sometime soon, now that we're getting into blanketing season and we've already clipped our horses, we want you to keep your eye out for a video on blanketing so we can tell you a little bit more about how we adjust our blanketing depending on the weather, you know, if it's wet, if it's cold and what we do to keep them the most comfortable that way. But thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you learned something new. If you enjoy this video, we'd love to hear from you. Like and subscribe and leave a comment about what you might like to see in future videos. We'll see you back on the ranch.